Last week, I released a review of this power supply from Toolkit RC, the P200. After I put that review up, I started to receive quite a few messages of people having issues with this power supply, but also complaining about its performance. As a result of that, I've decided to go and do a lot more in-depth testing of this power supply from a safety point of view. I've done tests on its short circuit protection, its voltage ripple, as well as its actual current load capabilities. What we're going to do today is walk you through the results of those tests and try to explain my findings a bit more. Now, I have to say up front, I cannot find a single major problem with this power supply having done all of the tests, but there are some quirks that I have found which are interesting and I will share with you as well in this video. Now, as I said in that review of this power supply, I was actually sent this for free by Toolkit RC, but they hadn't seen that video before it had been published, and as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. One mistake I think I made in that video was I didn't really put in a lot more of the technical detail on the testing that I'd done in the background before actually making my review. And in future, I'm going to be doing that to give people a sort of basis for my opinion, rather than me just saying, hey, I think it's okay. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's jump into the testing first of all. Okay, so the first set of tests I've done on this power supply is on its AC side from a safety point of view and then on the DC side from the ripple side of things. Now on the AC side, I can find no issues at all. The earthing is correct all the insulation resistance readings are correct and there's no problems there whatsoever. The next task for me to do was then to test the DC ripple on the output. Now to test DC ripple, the simplest way to do this is with a multimeter on the AC mode, but you can also do it more accurately with an oscilloscope. I have access to an oscilloscope, so that is what we've done. Now my testing for the ripple measurements has done as per standard test methods, which is to put the oscilloscope into AC decoupling mode, we put it on times one and limit the bandwidth to 20 megs, making sure that the lead for our ground was as short as possible and not leaving a loop that can pick up any external interference. Here is the first result, having tested it at a one amp load, and we're getting about 208 millivolts of peak to peak ripple. Now, this is a bit more than we would have expected on a power supply of this nature. Usually you're looking for something of less than 100 millivolts peak to peak, but in my test with one amp load, you can see we're getting just over 200. Moving up to a 5 amp load, and here you can see that the ripple has increased to nearly 500 millivolts peak to peak. Again, substantially higher than we would have expected from a high quality power supply. It's said a good supply should be less than 100, but a very good supply should be in the region of 50 or less, and a PC supply would usually be around 30 to 50 on a high end computer. Now, as you can see, the numbers are a little higher than we would have expected, but there is no published spec for peak-to-peak -peak ripple available on this power supply. The test method I've done is directly with the probes onto the connections. However, there are different methods used by different manufacturers to determine how they actually rate their power supplies. Some of them use a decoupling capacitor as well. As we have no published spec, I have nothing to compare it to. And all I can say is peak-to-peak -peak wise, we're getting somewhere between two and 500 millivolts. It is higher than I would have expected of a high quality power supply, but it isn't anything specific to worry about and it isn't anything that I would really raise any concerns over. Next, it was time to test the short circuit over current and protection circuits on this power supply. Now, to do this, we would short its output. I have done a huge amount of testing on this, and the first thing that I can say is the short circuit and over current protection does work. The power supply will shut itself down and it will not damage itself in the event of both short circuit or over current. I actually ended up causing this power supply to shut itself down over 10 times, and every time, it rebooted without a problem at all. Taking a look at the short circuit behavior, this is a scope trace looking at its actual output go down when we cause a short circuit. You can see here that the power supply was at 16.8 volts and here it returns to 0 volt. And this is the amount of time that it took 
to actually get down to that 0 volt level. If I put the traces up over the top of the scope, you can see the total time is 454 microseconds. Now this power supply is rated to shut down in under one millisecond. So there it is clear that it is performing exactly as expected. What was interesting though in the short circuit and overcurrent behavior tests is the behavior of when it actually goes into short circuit and when it simply goes into current protection mode or constant current mode. Because a lot of the time in my testing when I was shorting out the power supply rather than it actually shut down it would simply drop the voltage down to below one volt and dump current into my cables. This may be as a result of the internal resistance on my cabling but it is clear that there are times the power supply doesn't actually enter over current protection or over voltage protection and shut down it simply continues to dump the power into the cables. Now this is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad thing in the sense of if you've got a short you want the power supply to actually shut down. However it's a good thing if you're someone who wants to be able to use the power supply to be able to find shorts on electronic boards so rather than it actually shutting down it will continue to dump that current in. The power supply doesn't seem 100% clear of when it wants to jump from current protection or constant current mode into actual short circuit protection however it will do it it just seems to depend on what the circumstances of the short are. Next, it was time to test the wattage available on the Toolkit RCP200 supply. Now, this is a dual AC and DC supply. It can support up to 100 watts from AC or 200 watts on DC. The thing to note about that, though, is that isn't output from my tests that is actually wattage on the input. So the 100 watts on AC is 100 watts from the internal power supply but you might not be getting 100 watts on the output and then it's 200 watts on the DC. My initial set of tests were done on the AC side of things. We tested at 50 watts, 100 watts and 150 watts. At 50 watts the power supply continued and worked absolutely fine with no problems whatsoever. The same again was on 100 watts, it was able to continuously run on the AC output without shutting down at all. I did do then some tests up to 150 watts and at 150 watts whilst it did start you only actually get about two minutes of runtime from 150 watts on that internal AC supply. That is substantially over what the supply is designed to provide at that rating. However, it will actually do it for a very short period of time. When it does get a problem, it then cuts off, shuts down. If you give it two minutes, it will then reboot and carry on as before. At no point would the power supply not come back on. Every time I caused it to overload, it would cool down and fire back up, no problems at all. Next, it was time to do the DC test. Now to do this, I started off with a 4S LiPo and then I moved up to a 6S LiPo. I'll explain why that was necessary in a minute. I didn't bother redoing the 100 and the 50 watt tests because I didn't feel they were necessary. So we started off on the DC on the 4S LiPo at 150 watts. At that, it was able to cope no problem whatsoever. On 16.8 volt, it was able to easily output 150 watts. You did find the fan would kick in but it was able to work okay. Next it was then time to move up to testing the 200 watt. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting because you do need to make sure that you do have it calculated that you're measuring 200 watts at the input and not at the output. Initially I tried testing the 200 watts on the 4S LiPo however as I got up above 170 watts I started to get some strange behavior from the PSU and it would start to actually dump voltage and enter constant current mode. However when you move over to 6s that wasn't the case and I was able to take it right up to about 190 watts continuous output without any problems at all but I did need to use a 6s input to be able to do that. It's clear at 4S the power supply is able to deliver 150 watts but it isn't quite able to go up 
to the 200, but if you do power it off 6S battery, you are able to get up to that top end of the rating, as you can see via the current and voltage that is being measured on the input. Now, as we were doing these load tests, we were also measuring the voltages coming from the supply. I've put a chart together to show you what we were seeing, and what is clear is that the display does overread as you increase the load. It is to be expected that there will be some voltage drop on the output, but as you increase the load on the supply, you can see that voltage drop increase, and that output on the front isn't a direct reflection of what is actually being seen on the load and you do need to take that into account. It's nothing specifically bad but it is clear as you drive the load up on the supply the display isn't quite as accurate as it could be. So, in the end, I have absolutely tortured this power supply for the last two days. I have shorted it, I have overcurrented it, I have forced it to shut down, yet it has not failed. From my point of view, the one I've got here overall appears to be a good supply, and no matter what I've done to it, it has behaved okay. However, I do want to raise some concerns over that short circuit behavior because it should be shutting down much faster than it is when I'm shorting the cables out rather than dumping 10 amps into the leads. I do need to do a bit more testing with this, but it is a potential safety issue that you could have a short and not know about it because the power supply is keeping dumping current in rather than actually shutting itself down. That is something I'm going to raise with Toolkit RC and maybe that's something they can address in a future firmware update. As I've said, I have had it shut down, but more often than not, it keeps dumping the current in rather than actually doing the protection mode. Now, that's it from me on this one. I hope you have found this video useful. If you've got any questions, if you've got any feedback, please do put it in the comment section of this video. I would love to hear from you. On my future videos about power supplies and chargers, I'm going to be covering this stuff in all of those videos moving forward rather than do it in a separate one. That's it from me. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. Please stay safe and I will speak to you soon.